Hey everybody, Kelly Engineer here and welcome to episode 3 for the Mod Spotlight on Ender Utilities. In this episode I'm going to be covering everything that you see behind me which are all of the storage related blocks. It is a lot of information to cover and I have undoubtedly missed something because there's a lot of functionality with every single one of these blocks, especially the handy bags which you see directly above my head. So because this is a very lengthy episode, uh, once again, I have timestamps in the description, so make sure to make use of those to go to the part that you want to see. So without any further ado, let's get to it. The first item I want to go over isn't technically a storage block, but it heavily interacts with storage blocks, which is why I wanted to go over it in this episode, and that is the Ender Furnace. That is made with four pieces of obsidian, three basic Ender Alloy, one furnace, and an inactive basic Ender Core. And the Ender Furnace looks like this inside of its GUI. It has two different modes, a slow eco mode, which is its default, and then a fast mode. The slow eco mode, looking at the description, 1.5 times as fast per fuel and then the fast mode is six times faster but it uses fuel at 0 0.7 it's 7, 0.75 times as efficient what this means is that in slow mode one piece of fuel will smelt me one ender pearl as fuel will smelt eight items one coal will smelt 12 items one eye of ender 17 items and one blaze powder will give me nine items and because I haven't mentioned it yet, Ender Pearls, Blaze Powder, and Eyes of Ender can be used as fuel inside of the Ender Furnace. Now, if you were in fast mode, one Ender Pearl will smelt four items for you. So, yeah, it's definitely not as efficient. One Blaze Powder will smelt four and a half items per fuel. One Coal will smelt six and almost seven. It pro the bar probably got to about 95% done before it ran out of fuel. And then one eye of ender will smelt nine, correction, eight and a half items. Now this half thing that I'm talking about is uh, something that is exclusive to, oh, I didn't want ender pearls or that. I think blaze powder would be the best to showcase this. But yeah, the half that I'm talking about is because if I throw in items and throw in one piece of fuel, after it finishes smelting up, the items that I want it to smelt, the bar is not going to go back down as if this was a vanilla furnace. So in a vanilla furnace, once you run out of fuel, if no fuel is inserted in that time, the bar will slowly go back down and you'll lose your chance to smelt that item with however much progress is going through. With the ender furnace, that is not the case. You do not require fuel in order to complete the smelting of items. You can see that the bar is progressively going up. So this will smelt one item per minute or in fast mode one item every 30 seconds without the use of fuel. The key feature of the ender furnace is the fact that it interacts with an ender chest. So if I click this button output to ender chest enabled, if I go over to an ender chest, which I have one over here, you'll see that the items got inserted into the ender chest. So if you're smelting up a lot of stone or smelting up a lot of glass, then you can throw it into the ender furnace and have it output to your ender chest where you just happen to be building. One of the, probably the best feature of the ender furnace is, let's give myself a lot of items. Here we go. I have a lot of sand in my inventory and I am going to insert it into the furnace. And you see that I can put multiple stacks of items inside my input up to 1024. The output can also hold 1024 as well. And just to show it off, the fuel input can also go up to 1024. So you can have a lot of items smelting at once and not really have to worry about it, about filling up any sort of input chest or output chest for that matter, because it'll all be held in the ender furnace. However, when it comes to automation purposes for the Ender Furnace, it operates a little bit differently than the Vanilla Furnace. So I have set a whole bunch of inserters going into this Ender Furnace. And I have a bunch of fuel for Ender Eyes. I'm going to insert an Ender Eye right here, and it is not going to make its way to the Ender Furnace. It gets stuck inside the inserter because it recognizes this as fuel, not as something that can be smelted. However, if I put in the fuel here, here and over here and look back inside the furnace you'll see all of the fuel made it so as a fuel input any side 
of the Ender Furnace will do. On the other hand, when it comes to outputs, I'm going to change these inserters so that they are facing the chests instead. And I'm going to throw in some items. You see that once stuff gets smelted, if I look down here, this is where all of the stake is going. It is going to prioritize the output as the, da as the down face of the furnace. However, if I get rid of this, you'll see that the output is going to shift itself and is going to prioritize the right side. So my, out so my output is prioritized as the right side, but if I get rid of this, it will instead start prioritizing the left side. And then when it has nowhere else to go, it's going to prioritize the backside. So the outputs do work on a priority when it comes to things getting output from the Ender Furnace. That being said, when stuff is inserting via the top, only things that can be smelted will go in through the top. So you see that the beef just put, got put in via the top, and the bottom is only an output. It cannot be used as a fuel input. It cannot be used as an item to be smelted input. So top, strictly an input, bottom, strictly an output, and then the side faces can be whatever you want for fuel or for item outputs. Now the reason that this is, is because if I wanted something like oak wood, oak wood can be used as a fuel source. It can also be used as something to be smelted to make charcoal. So if any side could be an input for something to be smelted, then that means that if I put in something like oak wood, it would get confused and it would have no idea whether or not to put it in the input slot or the fuel slot. So by only having the input slot be the top, it is easier to automate that way. And that is all there is to it for the Ender Furnace. The first pure storage blocks that we're going to be going over are the memory chests. There are three variants of it, the small, medium, and large. And the small is made with two basic Ender alloy, one chest and two redstone repeaters. You're going to get three of them. The regular memory chest is the same exact recipe, except you're using two chests instead of one, and you're going to get two. And then you have the large memory chest, which is the same recipe, only the basic Ender alloy has been replaced for enhanced. So the automation services that these can provide to you are immeasurable. If I look inside this right now, and I'm going to change myself to survival because I've recorded this clip three times already. So if you look inside here, you'll see that there are only nine slots. However, the beauty of these is the fact that I can lock items to this slot. So you see that only sandstone is capable of going inside this slot now. Anything else that I try to add will immediately get ignored. There are two ways that you can lock the slot. You can either put the item in there and middle click, or as the first way that I showed, I just have it and I'm carrying it around with me. Hover over the slot you want, middle click, and that slot is now locked. These are pretty basic items. However, there is a function where I can turn this into a private memory chest, and that means that no matter what, this item cannot be broken. So I'm trying right now, and even though I am the owner of it, I cannot break this chest. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a dolly, and I'm going to attempt to pick it up as well. So even though this is private, I can still pick it up with a dolly. And anybody could pick it up with a dolly as well. That's probably a bug that is inside of the mod, but that's perfectly fine. This is a private chest. It is locked to me. And with the exception of a dolly and a cardboard box, if you're using mechanism, this cannot be picked up and it cannot be broken. And the only difference between the small memory chest and the regular is the amount of storage size it has. So this is the size of a regular chest, and then the large is the size of a double chest. But the functionality remains the same. You can middle click and lock an item to a slot. And those are the memory chests. Next item is the adjustable storage unit, which is made with a redstone repeater, a redstone comparator, an ender chest, and six basic ender alloy ingots. Now, the adjustable storage unit is a little bit different than the memory chest, but it has a lot of the same functionality. I'm going to open it, and this is what it looks like by default. Only one slot is unlocked, and it says max stack zero, which means no items can go inside here. So, using this slider right here, I can increase the stack size to what I want. So, I can only put in 12 items here. This is a uh, little confusing at first. When it says max stack, you make it makes it seem like 12 stacks 
of whatever you want can go inside here. However, what this is saying is that the max stack size, like the stack size here is 64, well now the stack size is only 12. So that's what it means by max stack here. But I can also increase the size limit up to a total of 27, so the size of a regular chest. And like the memory chest, I can middle click a slot and now it is locked only to that item. And that's really all of the functionality that the adjustable storage unit allows for you. Uh, in the past, in my, in my journey across the Void series, I utilized the adjustable storage unit to automate the creation of empowered canola seeds. So all I had to do was have the max stack at 1024 and then slots two. What I did is I locked a slot to the regular canola seeds and locked the other slot to crystallized canola seeds. And so that since only those items could go into this chest, I never had to worry about anything else. It was just very handy and relatively cheap at the time in order to create. And it allowed me to automate this much easier rather than worrying about how many slots were available in my chest or how many I was utilizing at the time. Also, since I am in creative mode right now, there is some extra functionality with the adjustable storage unit. So right now I have sandstone in this slot. If I hold one piece of sandstone and then shift middle click this sandstone slot, you'll see that I just increased it by 100. And then now it's empty. 10, 100, 1000 empty. So by shift middle clicking, I can change the value that is inside here because I am in creative mode. Alternatively, what I can do is if I'm holding more than one, I can shift middle click in one of the slots and I just maxed out the stack to 1024. So that is creative mode functionality only, but it's still pretty handy if you just need a lot of blocks and you don't feel like giving yourself them via the interface. Next up is the barrel, which is made with six planks of any kind, two basic ender alloy and one chest. Now, if you're familiar with storage drawers, then you are very familiar with the barrels because they operate almost exactly the same. I'm going to take out this sandstone and I'm going to input it into the barrel. And you'll see that I have a storage capacity line that is already going to be shown and it shows me what item is inside the chest and then a number representation of what is inside the chest. Now, if I left click the barrel, you'll see that I am taking out items one stack at a time. Put them all back in here but if i shift left click i will be taking out items one at a time so that functionality remains intact if you are in creative mode here we go shift right click the top and you have an interface here where some upgrades go and then a button that's right here so i am in creative mode right now so i can click this button and creative mode is enabled the barrel is now a magenta color and because it's magenta I can in, I can extract as many items as I want from this however I cannot insert any more items even if I open up the interface this way oh let's uh, clear out a block you must have an empty hand to open up the interface by the way I can't even insert items via the interface so when this is in creative mode it is locked in its current state I can extract however much I want from it, but I can never insert stuff. So let me remove this, and I'm only going to have 32 sandstone in here. So I do not have a stack of 32 in my inventory. I'm going to take this out, pick it up, and you see that I have 32. So when you extract stuff in creative mode, you will only be extracting whatever the max stack inside the barrel is. So keep that in mind if you are in creative mode and you only insert like one iron ingot in here. Whenever you try to extract in creative mode, you will only be extracting one iron ingot. So I'm going to open this one more time and just like the adjustable storage unit, I can hold an item in my hand and then when I am moused over what is inside here, I can shift middle click and you see that I just increased the amount that is inside here. I can hold more than one shift middle click and i just maxed out the stack of the barrel which is 4096 items however th that functionality is also a creative mode only so i'm going to turn off creative mode and i am going to put myself in survival mode and i am going to break this barrel you see that all of the items just went everywhere well that is what the upgrades are for
There are four upgrades that you can put inside of a barrel, and those are the barrel label made with a ring of sticks and a basic ender alloy. The barrel structural upgrade is made with four iron bars, four obsidian, and an inactive enhanced ender core. The barrel capacity upgrade is made with another barrel, two chests, and six enhanced ender ingots. And then the barrel void upgrade, which is made with a bucket of lava and a ring of basic ender alloy. There's also the storage key made with three sticks and three basic ender alloy, and while not technically an upgrade, it can be used on the barrel, so I'm going to go over it here. So firstly, the label upgrades. By default, the barrel does have a label on it. However, with label upgrades, you can apply them to each side of the barrel to have them display what the item is from any side. If you want to remove it, all you have to do is go inside the inventory here, and you'll see that it just removed all of them, even though I have other barrel labels in here. So, the barrel labels have to be applied individually. So, one, two, three. And if you mistakenly put one on the top, then, unfortunately, you have to reapply them again. Because removing the label removes the label from all sides when pertaining to the interface. The next upgrade is the structural upgrade, and the structural upgrade just means that whenever you apply it to a barrel, such as I just did right now, I'm going to put myself in survival mode, and I am going to break this barrel. Well, the barrel just broke, but everything that is inside of it is still inside of it. The structural upgrade just means that no blocks will drop, such as here, whenever you break the barrel. It is still, however, um, if a block of TNT goes off near the barrel, then it will still explode and items won't drop from it. So if you do have a lot of items in a barrel and an explosion happens next to it, then the structural upgrade will actually hinder you at that point because you will lose all of the items along with the barrel in the explosion. If you don't have the structural upgrade and TNT goes on, then you still have a chance to retain some of those items. The next upgrade is the barrel capacity upgrade. So I have this one completely maxed out right now with 4,096 items. But when I apply the structural up correction, the capacity upgrade, you see that the bar just uh, went down quite a bit. I now have a lot more stacks that I can fit in here. And we're going to open this up, and I'm going to use that little creative trick that I showed in the last clip by taking more than a stack, and I'm going to shift right click here. You see that I have 20,000 items inside here now. If I try to apply another, then you see that I can apply another structural upgrade, and the maximum amount goes up to 36,000 items. A total of 64 capacity upgrades can go inside here, and that means... Oh, let's uh, take that out. That means that a total of 1 million items can be in, or 1,052,672 items can be inside here. If you try to insert any more, it won't go. So 64 capacity upgrades is the maximum, and each capacity upgrade will increase the capacity of your barrel by 256 stacks. And the last upgrade is the barrel void upgrade. So if this is applied to your barrel, here you go. You see that a little icon here showed up saying that this is now going to be voided. If I try to put in any more sandstone into this thing, it's going to immediately be voided because it is at max capacity with that 1,052,000 items. I also mentioned that the key is uh, kind of useless when applied to the barrels because uh, you see that I have locked the item to sandstone in here. If I middle click, I've just unlocked it, but if I hit it with the storage key again, I locked it again. So middle clicking is really just easier than making the storage key and lugging it around and trying to lock everything when you have the functionality to lock it just by middle clicking whatever item is inside the barrel. You also have the creative storage key, which will automatically, when you are in creative mode, turn the barrel into a creative barrel. So once again, you can do that inside the barrel's inventory when you are in creative mode, but there is a storage key to make that process a little bit easier. And just to showcase that functionality, I'm going to go back into survival mode and try to hit this barrel with the key. It will still work. 
However, there is no crafting recipe for the creative storage key. You can only get it by cheating. So it really doesn't matter. I'm going to get rid of this now. But those are all of the barrel upgrades. And that is how barrels work. There are a couple more things I want to go over for the barrels. And the first of which is the fact that this block can also be camouflaged. However, because you normally camouflage a block by shift right clicking it when a block is in your offhand unfortunately you open up the inventory when you do that with a barrel so instead in order to camouflage this block have it in your offhand and shift middle click and you can disguise the block as whatever you want so shift middle click middle click middle click and you can also remove the camouflage by shift middle clicking again it doesn't matter whether or not you have the item in your inventory it can be shift middle clicked and it will remove the camouflage I also wanted to go over the labels. So the labels are always going to be visible to you, and if you have a lot of barrels in your base and they're all camouflaged as something, then uh, all you're going to see is the labels. However, there is a built-in failsafe to this, and that is once you reach 30 blocks away, exactly 30 blocks away from your barrels, the labels will disappear. They'll stop rendering. So if I go to 29, they reappear again. 30, they disappear. So that is quite a bit of distance away from your barrels to no longer be seeing whatever is displayed in them or whatever is being housed in them. So be careful when you're making a large scale barrel storage facility because you'll have to go more than 30 blocks away before you have all of that stuff being rendered. Before we move on to the more advanced items of this episode, I want to go over the last basic item of this episode, which is the ender bag. And the ender bag is made with three pieces of leather, four ender rope, wool of any kind, and an inactive enhanced ender core. So by itself, the ender bag cannot be used. If I try to open it right now, nothing will work. Well, that's because the ender bag requires link crystals in order to link to an inventory. And it used to be able to link to any inventory you wanted, but now it can only link to ender chests. So I'm going to take this link crystal block, link it to this ender chest, and link it to this chest. There is stuff inside both of them, and we're going to move on over to the tool workstation. I need the tool workstation in order to put these modules into this item. Oh, let's get rid of that. Here we go, put in an ender capacitor, put in the chest and put in the ender chest link crystal so in order to switch which link crystal i'm using all you have to do is hit alt and then your toggle button mine is h and you'll see that i just switched to chest and ender chest opening up the ender chest will allow me to use it no problem however if i switch to regular chest i cannot open the bag that functionality has been removed for now and will be added at a later date so right now, this is really just a portable ender chest that you can open at any time. You don't have to place it down. You don't need a silk touch pickaxe to pick it back up. You have an ender chest at all times that you can access. And finally, we're going to get to the memory cards. The memory cards are the bulk of a lot of the storage functionality inside ender utilities. You have five different types, four of which I'm going to go over now and the last one a little bit later. But the 6-bit memory card is your basic one, and it is made with 4 basic ender alloy, 2 chests, and a gold ingot. And then in order to upgrade it, all you need to do is make 4 of them with 2 pieces of slime inside. And then you can make the 8-bit, the 10-bit, and the 12-bit memory card. The way that storage is calculated inside these are, uh, I'm going to give myself one of these. Here we go. The way that storage is calculated is that the 6-bit means that there is 2 to the 6th power, which is a total of 64 items inside of this memory card. Now the 8-bit is 2 to the 8th power, which is a total of 256 items. And then 2 to the 10th power, which is 1,024. And 2 to the 12th power, which is 4,096 items. So that is how the memory cards are calculated when it's deciding how much space you can use inside of them. Now, if you feel like you don't need 4,096 items, you can put the memory card back in a crafting grid and it will give you the four memory cards it took in order to craft them next tier up. So 
If I want the 8-bit memory cards, put in one of my 10s and I will get four 8s back. So on and so forth to get my 6-bit memory cards back. And there we go. So you can downgrade each of your cards into the previous tier just by putting it in a crafting grid. The first thing you're probably going to want to put those memory cards into is a handy chest. There are four different types of handy chests. The first one, which is a small variant, is made with one chest, two pistons, an inactive basic ender core, and two basic ender alloy. And you'll get two of them. Then you have the handy chest normal, which is made with four basic ender alloy, two pistons, an inactive ender core, and a chest. The large, which is made with the same exact recipe, only advanced correction, enhanced ender alloy. And then you have the extended, which is made with two large handy chests and four basic ender alloy. The only difference between each of these chests is how much storage space exists inside them. You can see that the extended handy chest is of uh, quite large. The large handy chest is the size of a double chest. The normal is the size of a regular chest plus a player inventory. And then a handy chest small is only 18 inventory slots. However, functionally, they are exactly the same. You can put in memory cards into these top slots and cycle through the memory cards. So I'm going to put stake and a dolly and my pickaxe in this 6-bit memory card, and I'm immediately going to take it out. I'm going to move over to another chest, put in the memory card, and all of those items become available to me. So that is the glory of the memory cards is you can throw anything you want into a chest and very easily move it to another location just by taking the memory card out and moving to another location. So that is really all there is to the handy chests. Take these items back out. However, like I said when I introduced the memory cards, when you have a 10-bit memory card, for instance, you see that the max stack size is 1024, which means I can throw in these 10-bit memory cards and give myself a bunch of stone. And I don't have to take up nearly as many inventory slots because one inventory slot is capable of holding 1024 items. So a lot more stuff can fit into a chest and a lot more stuff can be transferred from chest to chest with the use of the memory cards. So there are some extra functionality with the handy chest related to these buttons down here and these button, this button right here. So there's sort items in both the player inventory and the chest itself. If I hit the player inventory, it's just going to sort everything that is not in my hotbar in my inventory. And then if I have extra items, let's uh, end stone bricks, some slabs. I'm going to throw in the slabs, throw in the cobblestone, and throw in the end bricks. And if I sort those items, you'll see that they just sorted perfectly fine into the handy chest. Then you have the buttons down here, which will move all items, move matching items, or fill all existing stacks. So what this means is if I have redstone sand slabs right here, and I hit move exist, fill all existing stacks, then it is only going to move enough to fill up a stack of 64 in my inventory. Alternatively, I have move matching items. So if I throw in one sandstone slab and move all matching items, all of the sandstone slabs are going to leave the handy chest and enter my inventory. And then you have move all items, which speaks for itself. So if I throw everything back in there with the use of these buttons, move all items except for the hot bar. So I press that. And all items, including my dolly and memory cards and stake, are going to go. Or I could move matching items except for the hot bar. And when you press that, everything except the hot bar will go up. Now the sorting functionality can be a little frustrating because say you remove all end stone bricks from here. And uh, you don't like that gap that's just sitting there. You want the stone in the first slot. Well, the only way to move it over is a stack at a time. And that can be frustrating. And really the only solution is to just physically move all matching items down here and then fill it back up with move matching items except hotbar and it will fill up that one slot or sort your inventory again to move it over. There's also leave one filled stack of every item type here on the handy chest. And if I press that, you'll see that everything moved up 
that was in my inventory except for one stack of cobblestone and one stack of end bricks. Those were the only two things that were in my inventory when I pressed that button, so it left me one stack of each in the inventory. And those are all of the buttons related to a handy chest. Next up are the handy bags. They come in two variants and they're both made largely the same. The basic handy bag is made with four enhanced ender alloy ingots, two ender rope, two leather, and a chest. The large version is made with four and advanced ender alloy ingots and an ender chest instead. I'm going to give myself one of each of those. Here we go and here we go. And I'm going to showcase that now that I have them in my inventory, if I press my inventory key, that the inventory looks a lot different. Whenever you have an ender bag in your inventory, it takes over what the inventory looks like, and that can be disabled right here. So bag disabled, and now it took over as the large handy bag. And this is what the large handy bag looked like. It just has two extra inventory slots right over here, and that is the difference between both of them. So I'm going to disable this one as well. And if I try to open up my inventory, I get the standard inventory. Most of my explanation is going to be do dealt with on the large handy bag. And, oh, I should go over that whenever the handy bags are enabled, it's always going to look for the one that's on your hotbar first. And if I enable this handy bag, here we go, it's enabled. If I open up my inventory, it's defaulting to the one that's earlier on my hotbar. And then if I put it right here and open it up, it's defaulting to the large one because that's the only one left on my hotbar. If they were both in my inventory and I opened it up, it's defaulting to the leftmost slot. And then it moves left to right, starting with each row. But like I said, I'm going to be focusing on the large handy bag. We're going to open it up, the bag is enabled, and I'm going to throw in four memory cards. So these memory cards mean that I have four separate inventories that I can access inside this handy bag with a bunch of buttons that do a bunch of different things. Now I have this stake right here. I'm going to put the stake here, put the stake here, and then you have a button called a restock mode. So if I hit restock mode, restock mode all, you see that my stake automatically went to 64. It took from this inventory here and restocked it because it knew that I had stake in my inventory already. So that is what restock mode does. You can change restock mode to hotbar only. So if I have 32 stake in my hotbar, then it took it out of the handy bag to restock the hotbar only and ignored what is in the actual inventory. And then of course you can have hotbar mode disabled, all, correction, restock mode disabled altogether. So I'm going to throw those back in here, and I am going to enable it to all. And we're going to move on to the next button, which is pickup mode. I'm going to enable pickup mode to matching. What matching means is that if I have something in my inventory, say we have these end bricks. So I am going to throw these end bricks on the ground. And I'm going to pick them up. You see that they went right directly into my inventory instead of going into the handy bag because I have nothing in my handy bag showing. Oh, let's uh, disable restock mode for these purposes. But here we go. I have a piece of endstone brick in my handy bag. Throw this on the ground and we're going to pick it up. You see it went into my handy bag instead. Now that is not always going to be the case. I'm going to throw 32 endstone brick onto the ground and try to pick those up. You see that it prioritized what was in my inventory first before it tried to put it inside the handy bag. Now that I have one full stack of end stone brick, any more that I try to throw onto the ground will immediately... Oh, because it's in restock mode, I just did that wrong. So, we're going to change the pickup mode to all. Same functionality, if I have one stack that has not been filled in my inventory, it's going to prioritize that first, but say that I already have one full stack, throw it on the ground, pick it up, and it didn't go into my inventory this time, it went into the handy bag because pickup mode is on all. The next button is shift click behavior. So by default, is it, it is in move to bag, which means if I shift click this stake, it will go into the bag. There's another mode, move between inventory and hotbar, 
which means if I try to shift click this stake, it's instead going to go into my hotbar and into my inventory. It will never touch the handy bag. And then you have another called double tap shift to toggle. So right now it is in bag mode. If I double click shift, you see that that arrow went away and is going to move between hotbar. Shift click again, or double click shift rather, and now I can move it into the handy bag. Over here you have sort items, it operates exactly the same as the handy chest, and you have block quick actions. These three buttons right here are considered quick actions. If I disable this, then that means that pickup mode all is no longer active, and I already had restock mode disabled to begin with, but if restock mode is all right now, but you see that the stake didn't move to my inventory, that's because the quick action is disabled. So click that again, the stake goes to my inventory, disable. And then update items, I have no idea what update items does. I have tried messing with it with a, very, with a bunch of various ways, and update items doesn't really seem to do anything for me. I'm probably using the wrong combination of items between my inventory and handy bag. So I'm probably going to have to do an update or a little bit of housekeeping in the next episode once I find out what this is, because right now it is completely lost on what update items is. Now the quick actions that are right here are also right here as well. So I can block the quick actions related to the side inventories as well. And then you can sort through the items and you have another update items disabled. Now that that's done, I can showcase the next ability of the handy bag, which is restocking from inventories and then dropping stuff into inventories. So like I said, I have quick actions uh, enabled on this side and disabled on this side. I'm going to enable pickup mode. So pickup mode all is now enabled. If I shift right click this massive storage unit, which is filled with cobblestone, and then look inside my inventory, you'll see that it just took four full stacks of cobblestone and inserted them into the inventory. And I can do this another time. It will take another four stacks, four full stacks, because pickup mode all is on and quick actions is enabled on this side of the handy bag. Now, if I disable pickup mode and instead enable restock mode all and click the massive storage unit, I just took all of the cobblestone out of here and inserted it back into the massive storage unit. So you can restock from inventories and drop off into inventories with the use of the handy bag as well. Speaking of massive storage, those are the next items that we're going to go over. Now you have the massive storage unit and a massive storage bundle. The massive storage unit is made with six advanced ender alloy, two large handy chests, and one active large ender core. And then the massive storage bundle is made with nine of the massive storage units. So massive storage units are capable of holding a total of one billion items. And then the massive storage bundle, as you might imagine, is capable of holding one billion of nine different items. Each block has its own creative functionality, so you hit the creative button, they'll become that magenta pinkish color, and that means that they are completely creative. I can remove as many items as I want and it will always remain as whatever the number was when it went into creative mode in the first place. However, because it's in creative mode, I can no longer insert items into it. Same thing with the massive storage bundle. It's in creative mode. No more items can go into it. Items can only come out. So let's turn off creative mode for both of these blocks. And I am going to go over functionality now that I have ignored for the entire episode. I mentioned earlier when dealing with the handy chests that uh, sometimes whenever you remove items from here, it can be frustrating because there is like a blank spot here. You could just sort the items, but it may not be the order that you want them to be in. So if you hold alt and press middle click you'll see a little green square appeared around the item if you continue holding alt and middle click in another slot it will move the item there i was trying to hold off on that information as long as i could however getting to the massive storage bundle i think this is the last item i'm going to go over where this functionality is new uh, eventually you're going to have close to 1 billion items inside of a massive storage bundle and you'll want to swap which slot those are in because there's no sorting functionality in here you have to rely on the alt middle click 
and then alt middle click in another slot and it will just move the whole thing over. And that functionality exists in every single one of the blocks. So I went over the, uh, no, not the ender furnace. Oh, it can be done with the creation station, which I haven't gone over yet. It can go over to module storage. Every single block that carries an inventory in here has some sort of alt middle click. Oh, the memory chest does not have that functionality. So I was mistaken on there, but you can try middle clicking in a lot of things and it will have that green square showing that you can move whatever block it is around inside that inventory. So those are the massive storage units and very, very handy. They do hold more items than a barrel does. However, they are a lot more expensive to create because they require the advanced alloys an advanced ender core that's been activated and two large ender chests which are expensive in of themselves. So those are the massive storage units. Next is the junk storage unit made with six pieces of cobblestone, two chests, and a small handy chest. Now the junk storage unit is pretty unique in that it can only hold things that cannot be stacked. So the dolly can go in here because the dolly is not a stackable item. If I add another dolly to my inventory, yeah, it will not combine with the existing dolly. So that's what the junk storage is for. If you have a mob farm running and you're getting a lot of broken pieces of equipment or whatever, then all of that stuff will stack inside here. And it's a uh, quite a bit of storage that you can house in here. However, it is most definitely finite. As you can see here in the tooltip, it says that there are 270 slots and a maximum of 256 items can be per stack. So I can only have 256 dollies in here before we'll start moving on to whatever the next slot is. So as you can see, the middle click moving around functionality is intact inside the junk storage unit. And that's really all there is to it. It just holds the items that cannot normally be stacked. But if it is an item that can be stacked, like cobblestone, it cannot go in there. Next up is the item pickup manager, which is made with an ender chest, a redstone repeater, a hopper, and six enhanced ender alloy ingots. The item pickup manager is very confusing to look at at first, but once you know what you're doing with it, it becomes quite simple. I'm going to look inside it and you'll see that I have two extra blocks right above my inventory. I have a transport filter and I have a inventory filter. Now in order to get this to work properly, I'm going to require an ender capacitor and a link crystal. So I'm going to give myself those. And now that I have those, I'm going to go down to the tool workbench and I am going to put in the item pickup manager and ender capacitor and I need to link this crystal to somewhere. So I'm going to link it to this extended handy chest. So now that it has been linked to there, put it inside and I can use the item pickup manager. So you see that I have the link crystal in here and this slot has become blue, which means if I give myself a bunch of stone, then I can add filters to things that are going to go inside my inventory. So I'm going to uh, keep this bypassed. It's by default bypass to use the transport functionality. And instead I'm going to enable the inventory filter functionality, put in a piece of stone and it is still on blacklist and I'm going to throw it onto the ground. Throw it onto the ground. And you see that I cannot pick this up. The item pickup manager is blacklisting stone from entering my inventory. So if I whitelist this instead, the stone immediately goes in. I'm going to bypass this functionality and instead enable the transport functionality. Whitelist a piece of stone and once again drop it on the ground. Now it got sucked up, but it did not go into my inventory. That's because if I go over to the extended handy chest, the stone went there instead. And that's really all there is to it for the item pickup manager. There are different presets that you can do. So say you are mining and you're sick of picking up cobblestone or regular stone, then you can blacklist stone from entering your inventory, or you can link this crystal to a trash can. 
If you have uh, like extra utilities, has a trash can, you can link this crystal to a trash can, and any stone that gets picked up will just um, or cobblestone will immediately go to that trash can, and you don't have to worry about it. There's also the functionality of this blue slot. If I have something in my inventory that's just died, I don't want it right now. I can open up the item pickup manager, drop that item into this blue flashing slot, and it will go immediately to whatever the linked inventory is. If you have more than one link crystal installed in your pickup manager, then you can cycle through them by holding Control and then H, and I am cycling through my link crystal. So link crystal one is now a barrel, link crystal two is nothing, and link crystal zero is the handy chest that I had going before. If I hold Shift and toggle, it will cycle through the presets related to that link crystal. So preset one is the one that we were just working with, but just a quick toggle of it will change the preset to what you want. So since I have the barrel as one of my life crystals now, what I'm going to do is I have no filter set for this link crystal. So I am going to enable this functionality, put in some stone, whitelist that, and show you that it doesn't have to be a chest. The item pickup manager just picked that up and it threw it into this barrel. So you can absolutely link it to barrels as well. We are in the home stretch because the next item is the quick stacker, which requires two pistons, four pieces of redstone, two basic ender alloy, and a redstone comparator. The quick stacker can be a little confusing reading the description on how to get it to properly function. So if I open this right here and read through all of this, yeah, it's uh it gives a couple clues on how to operate it properly, but it can get a little confusing. So I'm happy to remove that confusion by just saying that by holding these arrows, I can choose a section of inventory that I want to quick stack into inventories. I cannot pull things from inventories into my inventory. The quick stacker is strictly so that excess things in your inventory can go into adjacent inv adjacent like chests and stuff like that. So I'm going to place this chest here and because I have this top row selected and there's only stone, if I shift right click into this chest, then that stone immediately moves into this inventory. So I'll take it back out and once again with the quick stacker I will select this, put the stake there, and shift right click. And it moved everything that was in that top row into this particular chest. Now if you have something that already has a bunch of items on the inside of it, like say for example sandstone, I'm going to give myself some sandstone and put it in the top portion of my inventory and shift right click the barrel. And you see that all of that stuff just moved into the barrel for me. I'm going to take it back out again. Here we go and move it back into the top slot. So shift right clicking is not the thing that you have to do all of the time. You can also hit the toggle button, which is H for me. And when I hit the toggle button, all of that sandstone went right into the inventory. There's an extra portion in this description that is a little, uh, it doesn't translate well for me no matter what. And it says doesn't need to be held to use, but does need to be in the first found unselected keybind operatable item in the inventory. So yeah, that does not translate very well to me because I can be not holding this at all, press the toggle button, and nothing happens. I can hold shift toggle, control toggle, alt toggle, and the quick stacker does not activate for me. I do not know what that functionality is, but it works just fine if you're holding it and press the toggle key or if you shift right click with the proper stuff in your inventory. There is an advanced version of the quick stacker that is made with the basic item stacker, four pistons and four basic ender alloy. And in order to get the advanced quick stacker to work, number one, I need to be in survival mode. And then if you look inside, it looks a lot funkier than the normal quick stacker does. And it also requires two items. It needs a link crystal, and a memory card miscellaneous, which is the last thing that I need to go over. So looking at the recipe for it, it is just a redstone repeater for basic ender alloy, a piece of redstone, and a gold nugget. 
Now the difference between this memory card and the other memory card is that this memory card does not store items, it holds data instead. When I throw this memory card in here, you see that this filter becomes lit up for me. So I can put in sandstone and it is going to use the filter to only allow sandstone to exit my inventory and go into whatever inventory I need it to go into. So I'm going to link this crystal to this chest right here and throw it inside. So right now, the quick stacker will not work. If I give myself a couple, a little bit more sandstone, I'm gonna throw the stake up here as well, just to prove a point and enable the top row, put myself back in survival and double left click the advanced quick stacker. Nothing happened. I have the link crystal that is bound to the chest and the memory card is installed and holding filter items, the type of data that it's supposed to be holding, but nothing works. That's because you have to right click this little area and now that it is green, it has been enabled for quick stacking. If I double left click again, it doesn't work because there is another stipulation that is required in order to get this to work. And that is the destination inventory needs at least one item that you are trying to transport. So once again, I have sandstone here, sandstone in my inventory. It is the top row that is selected and one piece of sandstone in the chest. Double left click again. And there we go. We got the green sparkle showing that stuff transferred over. The stake stayed even though it was in the top slot because the only thing I have whitelisted is sandstone. There is some additional functionality with the advanced quick stacker and that is the use of area mode. So using the area around the block will ignore what you have selected in your link crystal. You can, however, set a filter if you want. So I'm going to once again filter sandstone and I'm going to double click the block and it is not going to work because once again, it requires at least one item inside the inventory in order to transport those items. So I do not have anything linked to this chest or correction. I do not have the link crystal attached to that chest activated right now. So it just found an inventory that had the item that needed to be quick stacked and moved it automatically. If I remove the filter and double click again, Oh, my mistake. If I disable the filter altogether and ignore it and double click again, then my stake left as well. It left the inventory and went somewhere. And that somewhere just happens to be over here in the Ender Furnace where I was at the beginning of the episode because I already had stake stored in this area. Our final block of this episode is the Creation Station, which is made with a crafting grid, an inactive enhanced Ender Core, three enhanced ender ingots, two pieces of obsidian, and two ender furnaces. Now the creation station has an inventory of its own and it is all the way down here. You can store anything that you want inside here and if you have a recipe stored, then it will take stuff from this inventory in order to craft those items for you. So I have these five slots right here and another on this side and what these can do is they can store recipes. So you see that there is a magenta highlight around here. So if I wanted four iron ingots and one ender pearl, if I shift left click this one slot, then it has stored the recipe and I can go to anything that I want and it will keep that recipe. If I double click it, it will move all items in the inventory to the grid in order to craft that item. And I can store as many recipes as I want or whatever type of recipe I want so long as it doesn't exceed five. And here we go. Ender Alloy Enhanced, once again, shift left click and it has saved that recipe. Now I can go up to one and it has gone back to the original recipe. Two left clicks will send me to my second recipe. And then what the heck, we'll give a third recipe of a regular furnace. Shift left click. It has saved that inventory. So two left clicks will swap to the inventory on that tab. And then three left clicks will move as many items as possible from the inventory in there to craft as many of the item as it needs to. Now, if you right click your inventory, it will remove the items from the recipe and put them back into the inventory. 
and if you middle click, it will remove the recipe altogether. So it doesn't matter how many times I left click, that furnace recipe has been removed from the creation station, and therefore it cannot be used anymore. There's also furnace functionality in here, and just like the ender furnace, I can have up to 1,024 items into the input side, and then it runs just as fast as normal as if you were using an ender furnace. Now I'm going to give myself another memory card, a 12 byte memory card, put it in here, and once again, I have recipes already stored here. I'm going to move to the second slot, and those recipes are no longer there. The recipes are stored inside the memory card. So I would need to go back to this first memory card in order to utilize my Ender Alloy Basic and Ender Alloy Enhanced recipes. Now because I have a recipe stored on here, that doesn't mean that I can't go to any other one of my handy chests, insert this 12 byte memory card, and have access to those inventories. And now that it's been put in there, I can go back to the furnace any time that I want, or correction, the creation station any time that I want, insert it, and the recipes will remain. So you can absolutely hot swap the memory cards between chests and the creation station without worry of losing your recipes. And with that, that is every single storage item block that is in Ender Utilities. There is one outlier, however, I consider that more of a tool than I do a storage block. So we'll be going over that in episode four. The item that I am talking about is over here on this side of the wall. It is the inventory swapper. So that will be the first thing I cover in the next episode because it really does deal with tools more than it deals with storage. So I am Kelly Engineering. If you have any questions whatsoever or if you pick up on something I invariably missed because I covered a lot of information in this episode and I couldn't possibly hit on every single piece of functionality that all of these blocks had. So absolutely put them in the comments, ask the questions, refresh me, and I will go over it in the housekeeping portion of episode four. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye <laughs>